Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. My name is Aaron Hilliard. If you're curious about mushrooms, if you want to learn how to identify mushrooms and what you need to know to go out and gather wild mushrooms, this is the video for you. So thanks for hitting subscribe and let's learn about wild mushroom foraging on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. So you're interested in wild mushroom foraging, but you don't know where to start. So what do you need to go out into the woods and start to forage mushrooms? Obviously you need to find some woods. The forest is the best place to find wild mushrooms. You can also find them in lawns and in fields and even in landscaping. But typically I like the natural forest. This is where a huge abundance of mushrooms grow in the rainy season. So most of the time that means fall or spring. Some of them associate with the trees and those are called mycorrhizal mushrooms. Some of them just eat decaying matter and those are called called sap probes. Just understand that your best odds of finding mushrooms is gonna be in the forest. A huge abundance of mushrooms grow in association with trees like these western hemlock trees. These are a great mycorrhizal associate. That means the mushroom actually lives in a symbiosis with the trees. And western hemlock, Douglas fir, pine trees, spruce trees, these are all great trees for mycorrhizal mushrooms. And these big conifer trees are easy to find and with them comes a lot of the good edible mushrooms. Certain hardwood trees like oak and elm and ash, those have good mycorrhizal associates too. When I'm choosing a forest to go foraging in, I make sure that it's not on private property. A good place to look is state parks, county parks, even city parks and national parks. But make sure to check on the foraging and picking regulations for those areas. If you've got a forest like this on your own property or on a friend's private property, that is ideal. So try to find places that are off the beaten path. Personally, I find that if I go really far off into the woods, I seem to find more mushrooms because less people go out there. Number one rule in mushroom foraging, if you find a patch of mushrooms, keep it a secret because people will go back there. Another thing to consider when you're going out is how to dress. When I go out, I just dress like I'm going hiking in the wilderness. I wear nice supportive shoes and socks. It's gonna be raining like it often is in mushroom season. I make sure to wear appropriate gear. Most people bring a basket when they go mushroom hunting. There's also mesh foraging bags that you can order uh, in the description of this video through Modern Forager. But something to collect your mushrooms in is good and it's kind of discouraged to use plastic bags because mushrooms kind of need to breathe. So they'll get sort of slimy and limp and nasty if they're all squished together in a plastic bag. So you found a forest, you got dressed, you got your basket, you head out into the woods and you finally discover some mushrooms. This is where it gets kind of tricky because there are so many types of mushrooms. There are millions of types of fungus and at least thousands of types of macro fungi that's actual mushroom fruiting bodies the age-old way of identifying mushrooms is to use a mushroom identification guide or a field guide and so a field guide is just going to be a book that'll fit in your backpack or that you can carry with you into the woods and mushroom identification guides are often bigger and something you would have at home so you can collect your mushrooms and take them back nowadays there's all kinds of technology through ai and there's apps like iNaturalist that i always suggest to people that will help you to identify Identify mushrooms. I would still cross reference them. You know, the internet is a powerful thing, so we don't need these big bulky books really anymore. You can use the internet and get pretty dang confident about what wild mushroom you found. I would just make sure to cross reference it with a few different sources. And then there are some field diagnostic tests that you might have to take, like doing a spore print at home. I would definitely suggest getting on iNaturalist. And then you can upload your finds. You can even obscure them so people don't know where your mushroom patch is. But that way people in science have a chance to know what kind of mushrooms are growing in your neck of the woods. So now you found your mushrooms, you're ready to collect them, to go identify them. What's the correct way to harvest a mushroom? Should you cut it or should you pluck it? This is a huge controversy. People argue about this on the internet all the time, but it really doesn't make a difference to the fungus. When I'm harvesting for food, I'm cutting the mushrooms off, but when I'm harvesting to identify, always get the entire mushroom, the entire base intact so that you can correctly identify them. There is no easy way to just look at a random mushroom and decide whether it's poisonous or not. You have to find out the identity of that mushroom. Just because a mushroom is red or orange or bright colored does not mean that it's toxic. In fact, some of the best edibles are really bright colored mushrooms. Old field guides and literature would probably tell you to keep mushrooms separated. It's really not gonna matter if a poisonous mushroom touches an edible mushroom. You have to ingest 
that poisonous mushroom for it really to affect you. Unless little chunks of the mushrooms start breaking off and you get them mixed up into your pan. It is okay to touch any mushroom. You can touch any mushroom with your bare skin. It's not gonna hurt you. There's rumors of one in Japan that can give you a little bit of a skin rash, but I wouldn't worry about that. I have never touched a mushroom that has harmed me in any way. The only way that you can get hurt from a poisonous mushroom is to ingest it. Once you've picked your mushrooms and you've got them home and you're fairly confident that you know what this mushroom is and it's edible, but you're still nervous to eat it. I understand that, I totally get it. I really would suggest to run this against a lot of different references, um, use multiple apps, and if you can join a local mycological society and take your mushrooms there, there are gonna be experts there that can help to positively ID this mushroom before you try it. When you do try it, just cook up a small amount. Um, and that's good to just know if it has an adverse reaction on your particular system. Uh, some mushrooms just don't agree with certain people. So make sure that your GI system is gonna tolerate that particular mushroom by cooking and eating just a small amount at first. Pretty much as a general rule, you wanna cook your mushrooms well because undercooked or raw mushrooms can not only cause GI distress, but some of them are actually poisonous. So with the exception of very few, I would just be sure to cook all your mushrooms before you eat them. There's a handful of certain wild mushrooms that I would suggest to beginners to start with. For me, I started with the chanterelle mushroom. This is a gold mushroom with really unique veins that run down its vase-like shape. These grow right out of the ground. In the Northwest, they're associated with conifer trees. And when you tear one apart, it shreds apart a little bit like string cheese or cooked chicken. This might be the most popular wild foraged mushroom because it's easy to identify. The next mushroom I learned is the lobster mushroom because it's super bright orange. It grows out of the ground. It's really easy to identify. It's a strange and contorted mushroom that's actually a combination of a host and a parasitic fungi that come together to make this amazing edible mushroom. It's almost unmistakable and there really is no lookalikes. That makes it a really good mushroom to learn to forage from the start. I got lucky enough when I was new that I found a cauliflower mushroom on one of my first outings. That was such an awesome find and there is nothing in the forest that looks like a cauliflower mushroom. It is a delicious edible mushroom that looks like a big pile of cold wet egg noodles growing at the base of a stump or a tree. All you gotta do is just wash it out in some cold salt water to get all the bugs out of there and kind of wash out any of the debris. I break it apart into little chunks and then cook it in any mushroom recipe, but it works really good as egg noodles in a stroganoff and it works really, really good in a stir fry. So the cauliflower mushroom, if you can get your hands on that, a really good one for beginners because it's unmistakable and it is delicious. The morel mushroom is a really good one for beginners because again, it has very few lookalikes. I mean, there are some mushrooms that grow similar to the morel, but you know, it's quite a stretch. If you're gonna call that a lookalike, you need to brush up on observation techniques. But a morel mushroom is really, really popular, easy to reference. There's a million references about morels as well as recipes. They're really delicious. They look a little bit like a honeycomb. Morels in particular really need to be cooked Treat them like chicken in the kitchen and make sure that they're well cooked so you don't get sick. Another one of the first mushrooms I learned to identify was the oyster mushroom and it grows on rotting logs. So typically around wetlands where I live, you can find oyster mushrooms growing on red alder logs and big leaf maple logs. They have gills underneath and they're growing on wood. They're fairly large and fleshy and they're pretty abundant. This is a really common mushroom and a great one to start with. I also suggest people get on the identification forums on Facebook, super duper useful. There's a lot of people on there that are experts that would be happy to help identify what mushroom you found. And finally, the porcini mushroom or the bolites, they're a really safe kind of section of mushrooms with a sponge pour surface. These ones are amazing, easy to identify, popular all around the world. You could pull a porcini out in a market in Romania and they would go crazy just like they do here in America. I put out so many videos about mushroom identification and what kind of mushrooms are in the woods. You can catch me at all the different fungi festivals this fall around the Pacific Northwest. Um, go to mushroomwonderland.com, get more information there. Um, and I do foraging tours also, so you can sign up over there, come meet me 
hang out and do some mushroom foraging. I hope that this has been a useful and valuable beginner's guide to wild mushroom foraging. Please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe if you like this kind of content. You could consider supporting me and seeing more exclusive content over on Patreon. Just go over there and look up Mushroom Wonderland and I talk about hallucinogenic mushrooms over there a little bit because I can't really talk about it here. So thanks for watching Mushroom Wonderland and I hope to see you somewhere down the trail. Much love everyone. Peace out.